thank all of the staff uh, and others, consultants that have uh, assisted uh, with the presentation. Uh, a lot of care has gone into making sure the appropriate information is available. Uh, as we indicated, and I see many faces from some of the earlier meetings, uh, this is a public hearing process, so as a result of that, there won't be uh, any immediate uh, feedback from us. However, we are uh, tracking uh, the responses and we'll be sharing that uh, uh, information with the City Council of Virginia Beach. We're very pleased to have the City Manager, Mr. Jim Spore, with us. Thank you so much for, for joining us again uh, this evening. Uh, this is a very important process and certainly one that we're very proud of. Uh, our staff has literally worked on this since, uh, I believe, 2009. So uh, there's been a lot of public meetings even before getting to the public hearing process. Uh, so I'm really proud of the transparency and the information that we provided to the public. So I think uh, for those that have not been to a prior public hearing, I think what you see is uh, today will be very consistent with the information that we have uh, shared with the public uh, previously. Uh, at this time, uh, I will turn things over uh, to our Chief Transit uh, Officer, Julie Town. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. She is working. You can hear me. That's awesome. I wasn't sure if it was going to. So I am Julie Temps, the uh, Transit Belt Officer um, for Hampton Transit. I'm the project manager for the study. Uh, the presentation today is divided into a couple of different uh, portions. Before, while this is all part of the formal hearing process, this is a, the formal comment process will start after the presentation itself. Uh, the presentation is designed to give you a little bit of background about some of the acronyms we use, what the process is, the laws behind it, um, and what are the components of a draft EIS and what all those acronyms mean. And then talk a little bit about some of the major points that are included in the document itself. Um, if you've come to one of the previous public hearings, what I'm saying should be substantially the same, but still have it written down that my flavor might vary slightly, but it's, it's the same information. And then we'll go into the formal public comment uh, session itself. So when you're going to do this several times, but just so that we're all clear about the process for a formal public hearing, uh, that this is a process that's required for a draft environmental impact statement. Um, that if you want to make comments, there is a form that you can fill out at the outside that takes your name, and then you'll be called in order to be able to make your comments. Uh, your comments are limited to three minutes at a time. We respect everyone's time to be able to give everyone a chance to, to put their comments into the record. They are recorded formally by the court reporter, and they do go into the record. Um, we do not respond to your comments right now. This is for us to listen. So when you address your comments to us, we will listen to what you're saying, will report it, uh, record it with the court reporter, and then when the next phase of the environmental document comes out, you will see the summaries of all of your comments and responses to them. Um, and the comments that we'll be responding to are what's called subs substantive, substantive uh, comments, those that are specifically made on the purpose and need of the project, the alternatives, the analysis that was done, um, and the reasonableness of the process those types of comments will be responded to. Um, if you're in favor of the project, if you're not in favor of the project, we welcome those comments, but we won't be responding directly to those. We will just note that, they, that you made them. Thank you. So about all these acronyms we keep using. The National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, is the federal law that was uh, passed in 1969 that required for any major federal action that the federal government review the uh, reasonable alternatives and the potential impacts of that action on the environment, both the human environment and the natural environment, before it actually implements the project or the decision. Um, some of the ways it does that, they're called different classes of action. The one that this falls into is called uh, an environmental document called a draft environmental impact statement. We call it an EIS or a DEIS. That is the type of document that is being done under the NEPA process. The EIS has specific elements that are required to be included in it by federal law and by regula uh, regulatory rules. Those include the purpose and need of the project. You'll see those in quotes because it is a 
Um, this was technically called the purpose and need for the project. It, it is required to include a range of reasonable alternatives, if such exist, and the no-build alternative. What happens if you don't do anything at all, since you have a way to compare um, the proposed action with other actions that could reasonably uh, be accomplished, filling the same purpose and need, and compare that to what if you did nothing at all. And then, for each of these alternatives, the analysis must look at a range of um, the uh, impacts of each of those. You can compare the effect it would have on both the natural environment and the human environment. We keep saying natural, human environment. Natural environment would be like air quality or wetlands. Human environment would be um, socioeconomic, such as income levels or um, uh, cultural resources, things that the human environment has built up and would impact people, park lands. Um, part of the public hearing process is required, this is required under NEPA for a draft EIS. It started on March 20th of 2015, was the formal start. It's required to be 45 days at a minimum. In this case, it's 46 days. We put out a notice saying it would end on May the 5th. And even though 45 days is on May the 4th, we are sticking with that May the 5th date to avoid confusion. So the end of the comment period is May the 5th at 5 p.m. All comments must be received by HRT to be included in the formal record. You're welcome to send your comments to FTA. You're welcome to send your comments to city council, to city staff. However, they will not be part of the formal DEIS public comment record if they go there only. You must send them directly to us. Uh, some of the ways that you can do it would be by saying them verbally here. It will be recorded. You put them in writing and submit them here. You can email them to us. Uh, we have an email address, UBTES at hrtransit.org. HR uh, on our website, there is also a link that you can submit on the website, or you can send them by postal mail. You can write them out by hand or type them out and drop them in the mail and send them to us. Um, any of those are acceptable formats to get the comments to us. We have, this is the third of four hearings in the process. And I just said all of that. <laughs> so. Yeah. The, the summary of what's actually in the draft years. Now we said the technical points of what need to be in it, what actually is in it, a quick summary. The purpose and need, that was one of the required elements in the project. The stated purpose and need of the project, the purpose <coughs> is to support the city of Virginia Beach's um, strategic growth initiative for denser development along that east-west quarter and uh, helping to protect some of the suburban and rural areas of Virginia Beach to allow those to maintain the character and focus growth, growth in the east-west corridor. The purpose is also to improve the transportation and transit efficiency within that corridor by providing uh, intermodal connectivity. The need for the project that's been stated in the document is that uh, it will serve this purpose because there is congestion in that east-west uh, corridor, the 264 Virginia Beach Boulevard corridor has congestion on it and limited mobility options and that the transit service that is limited on those roads is, uh, is impacted by the congestion that it faces when it travels on those borders. <coughs> now, that's the purpose need that's stated in the document. The alternatives that are studied in the document include four alignments. Those are specifically on the Norfolk Southern Railroad corridor. <coughs> they go from Town Center is the shortest, Rosemont, would be the next longest, and then all the way to the oceanfront with one alignment continuing almost predominantly on the Norfolk Southern Railroad right away that is owned by the city of Virginia Beach or through the Alaskan area. The, each of those would end approximately where you see that final station for each alignment with the exception of Town Center. Town Center, there is a range of possible end of lines within the Town Center area that are reviewed in the document. Uh, the final destination should the city select to move forward with this project to Town Center. The end of line could be somewhere in this area, with those that be a reasonable range of end of line options. Also, for the, the technology options in the document, there are two alternatives for technology. One is light rail transit, which is what the current technology is in Norfolk for the Tide, where the Newtown Road station is and where this project would begin from, and bus rapid transit, which is used as a similar technology that would run, uh, instead of on rail, would run on pavement in the same corridor, similar in style to the way light rail transit runs. 
in addition to the, um, for each of the alternatives in addition, the project would enhance the bus service in Virginia Beach for every alternative. And that bus service would include hours early in the morning, later in the evening, greater weekend hours, and greater frequencies to match up to the LRT or BRT proposed service that would allow the city uh, residents to be able to um, use transit to get to and from the proposed fixed guideway service or LRT or BRT service in an efficient way. The final part of the document, uh, the, I should say final, uh, the, the biggest next portion of the, of the document would be the comparison of each of the alternatives. The comparison includes the, uh, the comparison of what the different costs could be, both to construct each of these alternatives, as well as to operate and maintain it long term. Uh, the ridership estimate by each alternative, so you can see what the estimates are based on the FTA models for each of these alternatives to run. As well as a summary of each of the environmental, the human and natural environmental impacts from each of these alternatives. All that information is in detail in the draft EIS, but also in summary, an executive summary we provided tonight. So you can skim that. If you see something of interest that you want more detail, you can go to draft EIS. If there's more detail that you want even there, there's, there are technical appendices that go into a detailed methodology analysis for each of these topics. The next step for the project, after we're finished with this public hearing process on May the 5th, the next step is that the City of Virginia Beach will begin its process to select what's called a locally preferred alternative, or an LPA. Now that is a separate process from the NEPA process. It's local decision making that is an interim step to the final decision of where this project would eventually go, whether it be built or not built. Um, the City Council is planning to have a meeting part of its public uh, council process on May the 5th to discuss this topic and to vote on it on May the 12th. And that's it. And Ray will uh, come up and he will tell you a, a little bit later again <coughs> the rules for the public hearing. Thank you, Julie. Um, we're just about ready to start to receive your comments. So I just have to read this in to the formal record. For those of you that have been to our other meetings, you've heard this enough that I bet you could recite it. Um, it's an opening statement. Uh, good evening, my name is Ray Amoruso. I am the Chief Planning Development Officer for Hampton Roads Transit. <coughs> Welcome to this public hearing. Its purpose is to solicit your comments regarding the draft environmental impact statement prepared for the Virginia Beach Transit Extension Study. We are holding this hearing because you are entitled to have your comments become part of the official record for this study. That right, as you've heard, is guaranteed by the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969. This act ensures that environmental information is available to every citizen, public official, before decisions are made to build a project. The NEPA process is also designed to help public officials make decisions to protect the human and natural environment based on an understanding of all the environmental consequences arising from a proposed project. The primary purpose, as you've heard, of preparing a draft environmental impact statement is to provide a full and fair discussion of significant environmental impacts and benefits of the alternatives that are under consideration. So in simple terms, it serves as a means of assessing the impact of the project or the proposed action. The Virginia Beach Transit Extension Study was conducted between 2009 and 2015. The alternatives that were analyzed in that document include the no-build, as you've already heard, eight build alternatives. The build alternatives uh, include four technology alternatives for bus rapid transit and four that use light rail transit technology. Your comments will become part of the formal record as mentioned in the presentation. HRT will respond to all applicable substantive comments in the final environmental document process. Individual responses will not be made either here tonight or in a separate individual correspondence. We want to hear what you have to say but we will not debate, answer questions, or engage in conversation, not because we are being rude, but because the process requires us to refrain from comments tonight. It is now your time to speak. This is the third of four public hearings that are scheduled between April 13th and April 25th. Our last one is April 25th over at the Renaissance Academy off of Witch Duck Road, and that's um, Saturday at 11 a.m. for those who wish to join us there. Uh, the information and location of times those remaining meetings is available at the signing table outside. 
And as again, as you've already heard, while not part of the public formal uh, public hearing process for the DEIS, the City Council of Virginia Beach has announced that it will provide to the general public an opportunity to provide comments directly to the City Council members on Tuesday, May 5th as well. The City Council of Virginia Beach is currently scheduled to select a locally preferred alternative for the Virginia Beach Transit Extension Study as part of its regular City Council meeting on May 12th. I do thank you for coming and I'm going to ask Maria Arndt, the Senior Public Outreach Coordinator, to review uh, um, how you offer the comments now. Maria. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Anyone wishing today to speak at today's public hearing should have completed a speaker's <coughs> card and turned it in the registration staff. When your name is called and you are asked to speak, please state your name clearly in the city in which you reside for the record. Each speaker will be allocated three minutes in which to make comments. A timekeeper at the end of the table there will, let you, will help keep track of time. He'll let you know when you have one minute remaining, 30 seconds remaining, and when time is up. If you have brought written comments with you that you wish to submit to be a part of the formal record, please turn them in at the registration desk. There's also comment sheets out there if you wish to um, submit a comment tonight. Also turn it in at the registration desk before you leave tonight. The meeting is now open for comment. As I stated, when you come up, please state your name in the city in which you reside. Remember, you will have three minutes. We do have the speaker set up here, the microphone set up here. Please speak clearly enough so that the court reporter can take your comments. So our first one tonight is Mike Ash Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz. I get there wrong. I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Mike Ashkenaz. Um, I'm a strong activist for the city of Virginia Beach in various areas. And one of the things I truly support is light rail now. I've been involved since the beginning um, with the Light, Light Rail Now group as the treasurer and still hold that position. Uh, I love Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach needs to grow. Our growth rate in Virginia Beach has been pathetic. We grow at a rate of 3% per year. The state of Virginia grows faster than the city of Virginia Beach. We used to be one of the fastest growing cities in the area, on the East Coast, in the country, no longer. From 2010 to 2014, we went from 437 people to 450. We need to increase the growth rate. We need to grow, we don't grow in the eye. Our kids are leaving. If anybody in here has children, the more education they have gotten, they're out of here. I have three kids who went to college, they couldn't wait to get out of here. One's in Austin, one's in Tulsa. A lot of public transportation. 42% of millennials want to shop, eat, and live in the same area. They don't want to have to get in their car to go to, to all three of those places every time they want to do something. They want to stay there. We are experiencing a, ma experiencing a major brain drain. Our children who are educated are leaving this area. We need to keep them here. 25 to 30% of millennials don't have driver's license. They really don't want to drive. This is an older group. When we grew up, the car was the only thing. Kids today don't want cars. They don't want to be involved with parking and driving and congestion. They want out of here. We need to grow and we need to develop. Light rail will give us both. Norfolk's had $800 million worth of growth because of light rail. Charlotte, North Carolina, nine mile extension of light rail now, $2 billion worth of growth. We need to grow. People complain about taxes. How do we keep taxes down? By growing, not by remaining stagnant the way we are right now. This would be perfect for millennials and also seniors who are going to be losing their driver's license. Instead of taxes going up, this will keep them from rising. If we don't vote for it, we give $155 million promised by the state back to the state. We lose $6 million for the study, and we pay back $20 million, $20 million that the state gave us for the light rail carter, the guaranteed carter. We would be giving back over $180 million. This is a no-brainer. Mike, 
No problem. Please get on board. <laughs> Bring the checkbook. Can you hear in the back? Please step a little closer to the mic. Our next uh, speaker is David Veik. Probably pronounce that wrong. It's Beach. Beach, okay. It rhymes with Virginia Beach. Okay. <laughs> um, I've had the privilege of uh, being a resident of Virginia Beach for the better part of 30 years. And literally, if any of you have been here that long, you've watched this city really grow, really start to mature. And it's really time to tackle the future. This is a, this is a spirit thing here. This is something that can help grow our city, can counteract what's happening and that we don't have any control of, like things in Washington where they're cutting back and in, on the military. By golly, we need to diversify. We need to offer the things that other cities are offering. Mass transit being a really big one. And I've had the and I've been and I've been to some of these other cities. I've lived near Boston. I've been to New York City. I've been to Chicago. I've been to Los Angeles. And oh yeah, Charlotte too. And by golly, they're all prospering. Well, New York since what? The last century? It's time for our city to join and start to mature the way we need to and take advantage of not expanding out, but bringing ourselves back and up and along a corridor and making it possible for all of us to get where we want to go easily. Because I can tell you, when I got business in Norfolk, I don't take my car. I take the train. That's the way to go. And I know a lot of folks, if they had an opportunity to go to the beach, I wonder how many folks here go to Virginia Beach in the summertime. I'll guarantee you a lot of them don't. It's a real pain in the neck to go to Virginia Beach in the summer if you're a resident. It would be a whole lot easier on the train. And I know a lot of people who come here from out of town would find it a great way to get around. So hey, this is the way to go. This is what we need to do. And hey, Virginia Beach, <coughs> let's go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Tara Gerhardt. <coughs> Mr. City Manager, Mr. Harrell, members of HRT, my name is Terry Gerhardt. I reside at 3975 West Stratford Road in the Ocean Park area. Been a resident of Virginia Beach for 38 years. And I agree with Mayor Sessom's assessment that it's the greatest city in the world. I'm here tonight to offer some brief comments in support of the extension of light rail to the town center in support of the Constitution Drive Station alternative. The city manager is for related to Virginia Beach fiscal year 2015-16 resource management plan. Virginia Beach is facing a watershed year both in terms of its budget, but perhaps more importantly in terms of its vision for the future. You probably noticed that light rail is not just a transportation project, but is a catalyst for economic development. He goes on to say that yes, it is expensive, but it's a critical investment in our future that will eventually connect our six strategic growth areas. I understand that light rail systems, as with most public transportation systems, highways, bridge, and tunnel projects, are not intended to be profitable in and of themselves, but represent an ongoing investment in growing our economy, keeping our military and government operations intact, and providing the ability of our citizens to efficiently get from place to place in a cost-effective manner. Light rail is one important component of an efficient transportation system in Hampton Roads. But to effectively embrace light rail means we need to also embrace the growing vision for Virginia Beach. Changing our culture from one of automobile to public transportation won't happen overnight. The development of public transportation alternatives are a key to retaining the cultural creatives and brilliant millennials who are now leaving our area from places like Austin, Seattle, and New York City. If we can combine light rail with high density transit oriented development, not only might we stop this brain drain, but we enhance the economic vitality of surrounding shops, restaurants, and entertainment venues. Bringing light rail to the town center and continuing appropriate development around these stations will enable us to continue the vision that began in the town center 12 years ago. Combining reliable public transportation with walkable communities is a vision for our city I partly embrace. In closing, again, I would urge Virginia Beach to extend light rail to the town center as the next major step in developing a comprehensive, efficient, regional mass transit system. And I specifically support and endorse the Constitution Drive Station alternative. 
By moving forward, the city will not only be able to leverage the $155 million contribution from the Commonwealth for lake rail expansion, but it will position Virginia Beach as a leader in developing the long-term solution of transportation in the Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gerhardt. Our next uh, speaker is Frank Paxson. Oh, the file with such elegance is unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, my name is Frank Paxson. I live in Selya Manor, Virginia Beach, which is walking distance to where this light rail was supposed to go. Hopefully not. Now, why do I, there's a lot of reasons people want and don't want light rail. But I have to ask one question to start off with. Why did you move to Virginia Beach? Did you move here to get a big city atmosphere? Or did you get move here to get away from it? How many people came from big cities where they have light rail, where they have buses, where they have taxi cabs, where they got 100,000 taxi cabs crammed together in the city streets and they could hardly move? If I wanted to live there, I would have stayed there. I moved to Virginia Beach to get away from that. And now they're trying to bring that here. Light rail. Choo-choo to the beach, that's what I call it. Because where does it go? It goes from northward to the beach. The purpose of it is to develop businesses along this route to draw people from all over the city on buses to come into this light rail, mount light rail, go somewhere else, get off, get another bus to go somewhere else because light rail doesn't go where you want to be. Even the one at town center is five blocks away from anything. So you want to go there to eat. Well, that's all well and good. You have a few places that you can go. If they had a mass transit bus system operating in the city of Virginia Beach, you would be much, much better off. But they don't want to give it to you. The city of Virginia Beach, the mayor, is 100% against improving bus service until after he gets his light rail in here. Then he's all willing and good to turn around and bring in the, the bus service that you should have had years ago and don't have. And one of the things that another thing that he's concentrating on is he's concentrating the development of the city on one stretch of road. Virginia Beach Boulevard. Virginia Beach Boulevard has got enough problems. You got a quarter of a million cars coming off two off of 64 onto 264. <coughs> this light rail is not going to do a thing for it. You've got, you got 200,000 cars leaving the town road from 64. All right, I'm not going to go into numbers. You can find all these numbers yourself from VDOT. Light rail is a nice thing for somebody else. You've got too much water here. You've got too many people here. And I really don't want to live in New York. And I don't want, definitely don't want to pay the taxes that they have for the expenses of light rail, which is just this one little segment, it's two million a year, two million a year to do a whole lot for our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Our next speaker is uh, Catherine Callahan. Thank you. I'm Catherine Callahan. I'm from Virginia Beach, and I am the retired Chief Human Resource Officer for Mayor Group. And I come here today to speak to you about my personal experience of recruiting to Hampton Roads, specifically to Virginia Beach. I had the privilege, honor, and challenge of trying to bring talented people to Virginia Beach to grow a mayor group from its founder, Jeff McWaters, to thousands of people. And one of the first things that I heard trying to recruit people to this area was, you cannot get there from here. There's no high-speed rail connection. The airport is not efficient. And therefore, we had difficulties bringing in talent from around the country to a mayor group. I'm in support of light rail. I'm in support of extending the Norfolk light rail to at least the town center area. And the reason being is, without a light rail, we will not have a high-speed connection that will connect Virginia Beach and Hampton Roads to the other top areas of the East Coast. 
be they New York, DC, Charlotte, or other areas. And if we want to grow more Amerigroups, more companies that become Fortune 400 companies with thousands of high paying jobs to this area, we need to have a first class infrastructure system, which we do not have currently. I'm a native of Virginia Beach, and I was very blessed to grow my career here, but most people cannot. I have children who had to leave this area because they could not. And I would love to see them be able to work for a company like an Amerigroup in the future. So I encourage everyone to think about investing in our future, investing in Virginia Beach, and investing in the talent that we need to keep us a first class city in Virginia and on the East Coast. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Diana Howard. Hello, my name is Diana Howard and I'm from Virginia Beach. My friend Kathleen McCarthy, she's from Norfolk, read this article in the paper from uh, Carrie Dor Dorothy that um, referred to our Secretary of Transportation using a freak accident on 264 as the reason why he supports light rail. He complained to the Commonwealth Transportation Board members of being delayed because of congestion and it was really just a freak accident. When um, uh, a reporter asked him how would light rail have helped, he said, I'll be the first to admit that light rail is not going to reduce congestion. So she wanted me to read these remarks. To lie by, om by omission is to remain silent and thereby withhold from someone else a vital piece of information. The silence is deceptive in that it gives a false impression to the person from whom the information was withheld. It subverts the truth. Is it, it is a way to manipulate someone into altering their behavior to suit the desire of the person who intentionally withheld the vital information. And most importantly, it's a gross violation of another person's right of self-determination. A spin doctor is the job title for political people who intentionally speak only a part of the truth with the goal of deceiving their listeners and getting the listeners to support the spin doctor's project. A lie of omission is the most insidious, most pervasive and most common lie to the entire planet. Commonly, those who use these types of lies have conned themselves into believing that to intentionally remain silent when ethical behavior calls for one to speak up is not a lie at all. In spite of overwhelming evidence that their silence deceives, misleads, and often causes untold consequences, they refuse to speak the truth. There is also the common misconception that intentional deception by silence has no consequences. Lies of commission, telling a lie, and lies of omission, withholding the truth, are both acts of intentional deceptions. She was wanted me to read this because being from Norfolk, she was pissed about the lies and deception to get light rail in Norfolk, and she did not want that to happen here. So she was very offended by the Secretary of Transportation's comments. Thank you. And I'll submit you to the web. Thank you so much. I will. Our next speaker is Robert Dean. Good evening. The automobile has provided an incredible level of mobility to more than 90% of American families. But not everyone can drive. The first job of America's transit system should be to provide effective, efficient mobility to transit-dependent people. Unfortunately, this priority has often been forgotten as transit agencies have adopted another goal, that of attracting people who can be driven out of their automobiles, supposedly because transit is more sustainable than automotive travel. That's like selling air conditioners to Eskimos and heat lamps to North Africa. The cost of achieving this goal is much higher per transit passenger than the cost of improving service to transit-dependent people. The real problem with transit agencies is that they face the wrong incentives. Passenger fares cover a little more than a third of transit operating costs and only a quarter of operating plus capital costs. With Norfolk's tide having the worst ridership in the nation, those numbers translate to, according to former ODU President Jim Cook, 
the riders only contributing 10% of the cost of their ride, while the rest of us who do not ride the trolley reach into our pockets to subsidize the 90%, the remaining 90%. That's the same as if you went into a restaurant and ordered a $10 meal, and when it came time to pay the bill, you only pulled out $8, and when it came, and, and while the restaurant owner had to go out into the street and collect the remaining $9 from folks who didn't even eat. The 3,780-page draft environmental impact statement, DPIS, all 6.6 .6 million of it has a deadline of May 5th for public comment. So it makes absolutely no sense for any member of the Virginia Beach City Council to even remotely consider raising taxes in order to place an order for trolley cars. And I say trolley cars because that's all the time is an exorbitantly expensive glorified trolley. As the DEIS points out, this project will neither provide traffic congestion relief or economic development along its route. And that's the truth. The proponents of the Thai trolley are disingenuous when they say it will help the military readiness to provide transportation to the various bases mentioned. The truth. Not a single base in Virginia Beach is even remotely close to the proposed trolley route. Fort Story, Little Creek, Damneck, Oceana. Look at a map of Virginia Beach and see for yourself the whitewashing being done in order to convince you that this is a traffic congestion relief project. Nothing can be further from the truth. Let's separate facts from fiction and in many cases outright, outright lies going back to the public relations propaganda headed up by our current director of transportation for Virginia, Aubrey Lane. The, that organization was light rail now and their propaganda machine spewed out the following information in an attempt to persuade the unsuspecting public that they needed to vote yes on the referendum so that the light rail project will be or could be studied. Thank you, Mr. Bain. Our next speaker is Robert Brown. Oh, I apologize. Okay, transportation in the 21st century. Self-directed personal transportation will enable a more reliable, cost-effective movement of the general public. A self-directed personal transportation, not like that. Why? Why is this always true? Free people will always develop a system that serves them in the most cost-effective and timely manner. This is the failure of social engineering transportation as being demonstrated in Norfolk by light rail a false narrative by its very name. At some point, socialist engineered transportation becomes a job program for the directors and employees of said system. Light rail, which is just a modern version of the streetcar, which was re rendered totally unpractical by the bus companies, which were privately owned at that period in time, proves this point. Now that the bus company has become a humongous social enterprise with no real private desire to make a profit, it will be overcome by a new era of private innovation in transportation. Light rail impedes more transportation than it enables. For every person that pays one dollar to ride, ten other people are also paying ten dollars not to ride. This also means that the investment in social engineered transportation or the public by the people that will not use this system themselves is a waste of money and they should be held accountable. This has been demonstrated repeatedly throughout history, as in the Soviet Union, the Great Society, and on and on. If light rail was compared to the stock market, HRT would be under investigation for insider trading. The road to the future in Virginia Beach will not be enabled by money wasted on light rail. Okay, <clears throat> what 
is going to render the bus and light rail an inept form of transportation in the future? The answer, the autonomous vehicle, which will become predominant in the next 10 years, mark my word for that, you have Google, Microsoft, Mr. Brown, your time is up. Mercedes, and everybody. Thank you, Mr. Brown. <laughs>
I don't want to see the residents of this town pay for a train. Okay? I don't want to see it. I don't want it anywhere in this town whatsoever. I want to continue to live in this town and see it be, be a beautiful place and not see it overpopulated like it's becoming. I do not want the strategic growth area to happen. I do not want light rail to happen. Thank you. Good evening, once again, I'm Jamie Battle from Portsmouth. My, pre my presentation will be broken into three parts. Number one, everyday transit rider. I ride HRT six to seven days a week to mostly work and school with a few trips to the malls and even bush gardens, which I will go this Saturday for Tempesto. I rode transit before and after the light rail was built and drastically changed my commute. And it's the fast way to get to school at OBU and I have a headset which I'm here twice a week with around 25 bucks as an addition. Section two, light rail to town center to start off. In order to Virginia Beach to become the greatest city in the world, unquote, transportation and clean light rail must expand. As much as I love to expand the ocean front, for now, town center is the only affordable way to expand at this time, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> I am for stations located at Kellum for the new Walmart, Old Independence Boulevard, a bus transfer station, and Constitution Avenue as the end point. Along with expanded light rail service, the bus service industry will also be enhanced, including a new overturning bus route on Rich Duck for the new Rich Duck station to Greenbrier Mall, and several existing routes will have increased service whereby frequency, span, or days of service, including expanded Sunday service. This means I am pro light rail and expanded transit. I know no one wants taxes to be raised, but I am from a city that has that highest tax rate probably in the whole entire state, and may raise even higher. And if you find council members or city members, we're just fired. Virginia Beach may raise taxes to pay teachers and to expand light rail, but it will still have the lowest rate in the whole area, raised or not. Quote, an extension of the tide is a key way to expand the light rail system into Virginia Beach and further into our region, providing and mobility and connectivity. That's from Bobby Lane. <coughs> Number three, apologies to citizens. To those who never were here last Monday at the main library, I suddenly told everyone that whoever does not like real has to go. I was wrong. I make my apologies as a man that I am. I respect and love Virginia Beach as a good business enforcement, as a, as a student and as a shopper and as a beach goer. I will feel bad if I didn't have a chance to say sorry in that public hearing for the study, so I'm getting this off my chest. But I am saying this, live mail is coming whether you like it or not. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, our next speaker is Father Jim Park. Father Jim Park. Good evening, I am Father Jim Park and I represent uh, in Power Hampton Roads. I live in Virginia Beach and we've been supporting transportation and the concern for it in all of this area of Hampton Roads. I, I speak tonight, again, maybe using that frame, way to the future. For us to look at not only what here and now, but to look at the possibilities of, again, increasing our modal, modal transportation uh, and to ignore light rail, maybe a full party. I think to measure right now the value of what the extension of light rail into Virginia Beach, measuring it simply by what we have presently in Norfolk is full hard. In other words, two things. Number one is down the road in the future, light rail going all the way to OD to the naval base and possibly to the airport. And for us not to be part of that will be to turn our eyes away from the future. Not only then to mention the possibility of going to the beach itself. Number two is we cannot measure the possible economic development along the route by looking at the Norfolk tie as it exists. You're not going to find new businesses at Military Highway, at Ingleside, or at Ballantyne, where the, track, where the light rail runs now. In Virginia Beach, it will be a different story, and there's been careful study, a 
again by our deputy city manager Dave Hanson, to look at the possibilities and what that income <coughs> will bring in down in the future as we go. One last thing, as we look at the concern that may have about tax increases. Part of that tax increase, I want to remind you, in terms of uh, if the budget gets approved in Virginia Beach, is also for BHRC, a housing resource center taking care of the homeless. So again, it's not simply for light rail or for the arena, but it's also looking at that important element of taking care of our homeless. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Our next speaker is Darren Duncan. Uh, my name is Aaron Duncan, and uh, I've lived in Virginia Beach since 1972. I uh, was formerly educated for 10 years in the state of Washington, in Washington, D.C., who have fantastic mass transit, and you get around really good. The problem with mass transit is it's an inferior good. People, if they have a car, they're going to use it, but if they don't, it's a great alternative to have in any world-class city or even national class city will have transportation options for the least vulnerable. And so I support any effort in any way, shape, or form. I don't care where it goes as long as it starts the ball rolling. Um, I'm trying to keep to the tips that you provided and make a substantive comment in order to help the draft. I've only come up with one so far, but it um, relates to the term stakeholders being used in ESO, the introduction, and ES8, um, public involvement and agency coordination. And the term stake, the term stakeholders should be stricken from the lexicon of this study and not used in future official studies or reports. It is a general term that is ambiguous, vague, and, mis and uninformative. Its use in the study indicates and creates a special class of interest in the study in layman's terms, special interests. Therefore, in the public's interest for transparency, more informative and well-defined terms should be used in regard to who and what these interests are. Are we not all stakeholders? And finally, Happy Patriots Day to everybody. And uh, also, if you're of that ilk, Happy 420. Our next speaker is uh, Dan Coach. My name is Dan Coach. I live in Christopher Farms on Virginia Beach. And I'd just like to offer my personal experiences uh, in light rail. Uh, Frank, as I was sitting there, uh, you were saying how you, you came to Virginia Beach, and I came to Virginia Beach about 16 years ago with the Navy. And I can remember I was on 264 looking for the NAS Oceana exit, and I'm thinking to myself, get me out of this city. I mean, it was just 264 and strip malls everywhere. At least that was my initial impression. Over 16 years, I fell in love with Virginia Beach because we're changing. Um, we are developing our bike paths. Uh, we have uh, started our complete street policy, where there's just more than one mode of transportation. Um, so I, I think we're, we're making uh, progress. Uh, last year, in April of 2014, I had the opportunity with the Tidewater Bike Association, along with some planners from Virginia Beach and Norfolk, to visit the Charlotte um, light rail system. Uh, we are able to go up and down the, the, uh, their uh, bike path that parallels the light rail. Um, it was on a weekday, and we were surprised at the amount of people we saw uh, because they had both apartments, condominiums, um, they had office buildings, they had restaurants. And this area was described to us as the planners when we had our meeting with them as a gray area before they had their development. Very much what we have in Virginia Beach from which Duck to the town center, that gray area of under, underdeveloped uh, area where we have our warehouses. I know development is not something you look at in this public training in the light rail plan, but I think as they described to us, it's one of a three-legged stool. Uh, development, light rail, and their bike path all together makes a very vibrant area. 
Um, and we came home very excited after we saw that. Um, I think light rail is just one of the things we need in our toolbox. As I said before, we're developing our bike paths uh, so we can get around on bike. We're making it better for our pedestrians to get around. Cars certainly have a, uh, they're always going to have uh, a, a viable means of transportation. But I think with light rail, we can kind of pick and choose when we can, when it makes sense to use it um, in, in different ways. Uh, my wife and I, uh, when we attend any event in Norfolk, we always go by light rail. Um, uh, also, just one, as a, you know, more than one tool in, in the box. Um, one day I, I ride my bike back and forth to my work, uh, which is five miles each way. I came home, I had to get in my car, I went to the light rail station at Newtown Road, took light rail down to the MacArthur Mall station, and then walked over to the new Stover Library. So again, it's more than just one way to get around. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coach. Our next speaker is uh, Kitty Browder.